compared this time around, they still prefer to get that vein band down. Of course, this time they are on the blue side, so maybe they think they can try to take the Gragas just away from Watch. And there's the Victor ban once again. <laughs> so there's the Gragas ban. Well, Gragas actually being banned by Najin, so they wanted the LeBlanc and the Varus to be out of the hands of Incredible Miracle previously, but when they have to last ban that Callista, yeah, they're gonna get one of them. They're gonna get something they want more than likely Incredible Miracle this game. Actually, oh. I am going to ban the Callista. That's gonna free up probably a LeBlanc ban. Yeah. Oh. Well, they could dare IM to first pick LeBlanc and just uh, ban yeah. the Ferris. I think that's probably a better call. As Najin, you're probably still going to get that LeBlanc in the first round of the draft on the red side. We'll see if IM prioritizes it or not. If that's the case, then they're going to get <laughs> Rek'Sai. Yeah, I mean, there's Sejuani, their pick of a jungler. A lot of options here. Right there, I think uh, top lanes also, or they could also just secure that Sivir. It's Bosha and the utility. Being pretty nice, yeah. I think you definitely secure that for OQ this time around. Bane or uh, Tristana can just get blown up very easily. Yeah, yeah, you got that spell shield this time. You go for the Nautilus, it's just very tanky. Minimize the burst coming in yeah. from this LeBlanc. And what will Goon play into it is the question. 5.9 Z. 5.9 Z. Bring it, Goon. I do, I would love to see that. Yeah, it, you know, see if he plays it maybe a little bit differently or just, just doesn't take as many big risks, but hey, Zed is still strong. It's just, you can't be as crazy about your dives. And there is the Janna and the Lucian. So going for that bully lane up against the Sivir, trying to do a lot of damage with the Lucian trades off of his passive, combined with the Eye of the Storm. Goon could go for the Kastin, and that is what he will do. All right. Just trying to have a more patient laning phase. At least they have some wave clear in their Sivir, and there is the Rek'Sai for Watch. Still no jungler yet on the side of Incredible Miracle. They could go for Maokai Sejuani here and set up for a pretty standard team fighting composition. Yeah, the Maokai being secured, also just a good pick away from Najin when you already have LeBlanc, but maybe they want to just favor a little bit more power in Hecarim. I really prefer the Maokai here. Right? I just just don't go for a blind pick Hecarim when the Nar is still up. <laughs> It technically worked for Najin last game, but not for the reasons you think it did. That was not yeah. one of the reasons. He was still having a really hard time in lane, Duke. And there you go, Maokai and Sejuani, as suspected, will be... Oh, okay, Evelyn, fine. Okay. I mean, Tucson, he did all right in Sejuani, as much as he could, especially given the pressure that Watch put out early on. Personally, I don't like Evelyn into Rek'Sai. I think it's kind of pointless yeah. because it eliminates one of the main strengths that Evelyn has and that the Sejuani sets up more for the AoE. Yes. If you're going to have to farm pretty passively anyway because you're going to be seen by Rek'Sai, then what's the point of the Evelyn? Yeah, and this right here means that I am the only surefire initiate they have is going to actually be Apple on that Maokai. The others are very situational. Uh, you can usually find a flank with Evelyn if you're a uh, top jungler. And will we actually <laughs> see a top lane rise for Duke? Remember, Back in his KT days when he was Leopard, he was actually yeah. a very good top lane rise, but I'm not a fan. I like the Rumble here. You already have a scaling champion in the Cassidy. Don't overdo it. Play for a safer mid game where you still have that punch. Let Goon carry you late, and so I like the Rumble. Yeah, Equalizer are also going to do pretty well when the other initiates from IM kind of have to just walk towards you, other than LeBlanc, really. So, uh, all the picks going down. Now, Goon with that casting, he's played this matchup earlier this season against Anarchy. Uh, did end up doing well that game. Got the win against Mickey LeBlanc. Eventually, they lost the uh, whole match, though. But Cassidy, I mean, yeah, because of that shield, the magic shield you get on your Q, you can trade pretty favorably in lane, and then you just scale better into the late game. And Goon, of course, going with that comfort pick once again. And the Sivir Cassidy combo is really scary, too, in terms of that mobility in the late game. So, right on. Najin, like the composition, should be fairly balanced as they head into the late game. And Watch should be able to camp that mid lane and keep Goon alive early and keep eyes on Tucson's Evelyn pick. And just picking Rise into this would have been so dangerous for Duke as well, because Rise into Maokai. <laughs> I mean, Maokai's just going to W you, and if the enemy jungler's there, you're dead. Yeah. yeah you, you can dive you really easily. I'm just not a fan. So 
Uh, should be standard lanes here if IM has their way. They wanted the lane bully lane of Janna and Lucian up against this Sivir. We'll see what they can do with it. And if Goon can survive the early game. All right, well, set number two loading into the game. Can IM tie it up after a disappointing loss in game one? Let's find out as we head into Summoner's Rift. This best of three today, our one match between Longzu IM versus Notch and EM Fire. And looks like for now, everyone just heading to standard lane matchups and probably not, you know, no big motivation to necessarily switch out of it. No, I don't think we're gonna see invades here. Uh, even though, Notch may want to dodge this 2v2. Right. I mean, that, that's kind of the one reason, but I don't think it's as emergent. Um, certainly not urgent. Uh, two going with the Doran Shield for that sustain this time. Be passive, Tusa going to sneak his way into the enemy jungle as Rek'Sai dips into the bottom side of the map. So they will get deep ward down to see the starting jungle pathing over at the Krugs. And also, Apple sneaks a ward in by the top turret. So they are at least looking for a lane swap right now, seeing if OQ and Pure are standing by their tier one, or who's up there. Man to watch, as always, as one of watch the bigger. Yeah, <laughs> I came here to watch you. Watch you is actually saying, like, I came here for that, so. It's a play on words. Koreans love their puns, man. It's true. It is quite true. They they enjoy puns. They enjoy slamming words together with they syllables. <laughs> like playing with their words, basically. <laughs> and yeah, standard lane is just going to come through. Malachi going to pick up that wolf camp. Pretty standard these days. And we're already picking things off with a little harass, but there is the heal coming in right away from the relic shield. You're just taking some <laughs> free hits. Nautilus is so tanky in the early laning phase. Look at that trade right there, doing pretty much nothing to Nautilus. Yeah. Oki took a little bit of a hit. Now, it will stack up, but of course, Lucian needs to start managing his mana a little bit after using his abilities in such a quick succession early on. All right, looks like Mirror ju uh, jungling from our two junglers so far. Both starting Krugs into red and then hopping over to the other side of the jungle. Now we start to see a little bit of difference right there. Apple did take the wolf camp already and TP into the top side for that very subtle advantage right. in terms of experience, but he's still getting shoved in. Now, Duke has to play this pretty carefully because here's the time where he can get hit by a gank as we see Tucson head up from motioning towards the top side of the map. And yeah. it's very dangerous to play Rumble against this Maokai Evelyn combo. We'll see if he's gonna respect the 330 gank. Ooh, he's going all the way around, and Duke, I mean, yeah, he's staying behind the minion line, but he goes forward for a hit, and Tucson's gonna get one at first. They get the flash, and Apple's just gonna be content with that. Tucson gets a little bit of a hit onto Duke also. Now, Duke has his teleport, uh, and also the lane is shoved forward, so we'll see how Apple deals with that lane now. Yeah. And there. Predicting, predicting those ganks from an Evelyn is very annoying, obviously, because even though he had a ward in his inventory, not going to help him in that particular situation. He can just rely on the fact that he does have the TP advantage and TP still up, and Watch will be covering him as he tries to break the freeze on the turret that Apple has developed right now. Yeah, Tucson taking some that. Raptors. Now this, if Watch is smart, he's just gonna sit in the lane brush and wait for Evelyn to come. Apple still playing a little bit aggressively oh. too. Apple's just starting the duel, waiting for Tucson to come in, but he takes too many hits, and there's a flash forward from Watch, and Tucson just has to back out. Apple going in a little too early and taking a lot of minion damage too, and now Watch sees Tucson with that Tremor Sense. The ping's coming in. Tucson has to run as fast as possible. Goon doesn't have too much leisure to come help, so Tucson will be able to get out just fine. Wow, that was such an ill-advised trade from Apple onto this Rumble. Duke doing most of that damage, like you said, with the minion wave himself, and just watch 
flashing in, but that's such a predictable thing to do. Now let's talk about how that unfolded. Najin knew, due to their early level one ward, that he was starting up in the top side of the jungle at the Krugs. Therefore, he would have cleared down to blue by the time that he was ganking up at the top side. At that point, Watch will probably recall for a jungle item and could head back into lane. They also yeah. knew that there was a freeze there. Ergo, Rumble would have to push forward to try and clear it out. And as a Rumble, uh, when you play against Rumble at a professional level, almost always there will be a jungler in the lane to <laughs> counter gank because Rumble is vulnerable, particularly without Flash. That was an extremely telegraphed position from Najin, and Apple just fell for it. Yeah, he went a little too early. Tucson was still quite a ways away, uh, but Apple got a little eager, thought maybe he could get enough damage in. On to Duke. Theme for today, Long Zhu IA, ill advised. <laughs> it was. I, I not, was <laughs> not incredible miracles today. But we'll see if they can climb back in. I mean, the game is far from over. Oh, no, in fact, I am actually does have a little bit of a gold lead right here in spite of the. Well, they're at least keeping it even due to the CS differential. Yeah, I mean, Apple still has. You know, it was shoving in just fine, and they'll be able to trade there. Uh, mid has a decent advantage, although Goon's been trading very favorably. He hasn't been able to farm as well, and Frozen going for that Chalice uh, just for just to kind of even out that trading circumstance against Cassidy, really, and to shove it in, of course, with that uh, mana region too. Thank you. Take a little bit of a hit in terms of his CS. Uh, expected in this lane matchup, though. He's going to go back and start to make his first purchase of the game. Probably will be a pickaxe as well as what Lucian has. So both players going double Doran's Blade pickaxe for a stronger laning phase right now. Early recall from the AD carries. And Goom already. Oh, Goom goes for the slow onto Frozen. Frozen gets the chains. He gets the snare onto Goom, but Watch is still there. Watch looking for the knock of forces. The second blink away from Frozen. Frozen didn't have to use any summoner spells on that one, so not too big of a loss. Just got chased away for a couple seconds there. Yeah, really didn't even take any damage either, so Watch showing himself in the mid lane for not very much benefit, but Tucson unable to take advantage of his appearance. And there is a scuttle crab for Watch as he <laughs> finds Tucson. See that Tucson just going to clear that out. Doesn't really want to deal with that sitting around there while he continues to roam his jungle. Meanwhile, Duke charging up. To see if he can get some extra damage onto Apple. He actually didn't need to clear that ward out because it was only a trinket ward. Mm. And he had just cleared that Grom. So by the yeah. time that he got up back into that side of the jungle, there wasn't going to be any information. So he kind of actually wasted his sweeper right there. Oh, that's true. Very true. Pure Inokyu doing what they can, and oh, gets a nice drag down onto Roar, and there's the Spell Shield being soaked in by Oki, but he still takes a big hit from Roar, and there's the Ignite onto Roar, he takes both sides of Boomerang Blade, but here comes a Teleport from Apple. Oki's really low, but Roar doesn't want to charge in as Duke also counters with his own Teleport, and all is back to normal, pretty much dead, even in terms of health loss, too. Yeah, I just, that was a deterring Teleport right there. Just making sure that OQ didn't all in as soon as the exhaust was up. Right. And giving that support. Tucson uh -oh. now creeping through. Ignar goes for the Howling Gale. Only gets to knock up onto Pure, though. Here, here, here's the thing, uh -oh. though. Roar used his Scrying Orb on the brush in the river, which is a bit of a tell that you want to play aggressively. Because if we look at the minion wave right now, it was pushing towards Roar. So the only reason he would use his orb on the river brush when his support is in the river brush closer to him is because they want a gank. <laughs> so I don't know about that. That yeah. was that's why you saw Oku and Pure backing off immediately. Yep. Knowing that you know Dungeon not there. I am got that information and all is back to normal. So two zip just Know, not getting much advantage of the time spent there, but he didn't stay around for too long, so no big losses, just no big gains either for Rose, who I am. We're still a little bit behind thanks to that first blood going over to Najin earlier on, and now they've stabilized somewhat. In fact, Duke uh, leading a bit in terms of CS at the top. No, LeBlanc in the mid lane, farming just fine, but still hasn't really been able to do much, and 
Kassadin with his changes, I mean, this is what he can do. He can actually buy himself enough time on his own without too much help from his teammates. Of course, yeah, he did just like him. You trade, you trade intelligently with your Q, and you're he's just not going to take damage in an AP matchup. And here is Watch just soloing out the Dragon right now while his dual lane is in base. Very curious timing. Well, there's a Howl and Gale. It's going to come through. It'll get the damage, and Watch will be very thankful for that. As he didn't have Smite either. So Wow, that was... That Cold. was pretty risky. <laughs> but he gets it. Wow. Okay. Well, I wouldn't have made that decision, but Watch actually gets away with it right there. No smite. And his dual lane going down. So if literally LeBlanc had decided to pop over the wall or anything like that, sure, he had some wards to see that incoming, but there's definitely a play that Frozen could have made with double... Distortion and Flash right there to take that Baron, for sure, or that Dragon, for sure. Yeah, Frozen's just been tied in this lane so much because of the way that Goon's been training favorably and because of the pressure that Watch put out earlier. Frozen's just not able to move around too easily. And of course, the side lane's also just kind of being so dead even. Uh, no real openings or blatant openings for Frozen to make a play around the map. Yeah, it looks like Duke just dropping his ultimate to push it all the way back into the turret and then standing right back in the lane. So not really sure why he dropped the equalizer right there. Maybe he just wants to dial up the pressure in the top lane and try and get Evelyn there. He does have a pink board if she walks into the river. Yeah, the pink board is spotted uh, by both sides. So Tucson's gonna gank. He should be able to gank a different way all the way around, but pink board throws him into him. Watch comes in for a gank, gets the knock up onto Ignard. There is the ultimate from Jenna. And Pure takes a lot of damage from Roar. They have to use the summoner to heal it. Tucson charges forward a little too far, gets knocked up. There's the Ignite, and Pure will eventually go down as Roar now battles Oku, and he gets the double kill. Flashes out, and Frozen's here. Watch will pick up that one. He gets chained, but Goog is now here. So Apple and Ignar both have to watch out. They're hungry for the kill. On to Duke, and Frozen gets it. Can he come back and save Ignar? I think, oh no, he won't be able to as Goog just blinks over the wall, gets the damage, and Watch picks up the kill. Wow, what a bloodbath there on the bottom side. Tucson and Frozen escape. But, I mean, three for three in wow. the end, traded out. So a lot of deaths coming through. Watch getting three kills now. <laughs> He's uh, starting his killing spree ever since that first blood. All right, it's now time for Hex Drinker and Ravenous Hydra to this Rek'Sai. It's up to you to hard carry, Watch. <laughs> Never really thought no sight would stone. see a day. <laughs> that that might happen. Don't think it will today either. Goon taking some damage, especially after uh, that fight. Frozen came back earlier into the lane, had a bit more advantage. Uh, has a little bit more just stamina and stats right now too. As Goon waiting to build up his ROA, should be able to get it after that killing assist that time. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's gonna be a done item next time he recalls. Yeah, right and there. there it is. So a little bit early on that, thanks to the killing assist, like you're saying, that he managed to pick up. Duke getting a huge minion wave in the top side. He's gonna try and gank him right there. They know his flash is down. And Equalizer is up for him and watches right there. Yeah, oh, Duke puts the ward down and nice find. Duke was very aware of that timing. And watch is still there as so a Duke trying to taunt them into a fight. But I am also not gonna fight that. I mean, just what we're seeing again, what we discussed before the entire match started was Tucson not able to really do anything around the map. He's just farming, but even then he's not getting like a massive advantage in farm. Uh, he's not getting a massive vision advantage. It's just been very difficult in both game one and two for the jungler of IM. And it's surprising too, because Tucson has been top 10 on Korean soul queue, even after his, actually it was prompted by his jungle transition. Yeah. He was able to climb up a lot in the rankings, but playing jungle in solo queue and playing jungle at the professional level are pretty different. Yes. As far as, as far as positions go in League of Legends, solo queue jungle is the least like professional jungling because you really have to take in mind a lot more about compositions and timings than you do in the context of solo queue. Also, you're gonna be going for a lot less carry items that you can get away with in solo queue. Right. You have to play around uh, tankiness and vision in the current meta, pretty much everybody buying that sight stone these days, so a very different beast. Yeah, I mean, it is hard. Respect to any jugglers who may get high in the ladder rankings, because it's hard to get there, but again, you make some 
very different choices in order yeah. to get there because it's hard. And in solo queue, if you're watched right now, you're building straight damage. <laughs> for sure, because that's how you carry a game. Yes. And Tucson's going to get spotted by watch. Tucson, the Rapture buff going to be popped and not going to be able to clear that ward. Not that it really matters too much for Evelyn. She'll be able to walk through that again anytime she wants. But what matters is that watch kind of has tabs on this Evelyn. Tucson still not able to do much. I mean, got those two assists because of that bloodbath in bottom lane earlier. But... Roar really going for an aggressive build too. Trying to finish this ghost blade now. Has a brutalizer for that arm penetration early here. I don't know why you would lens that brush when you have a pink ward in it. Very good point. For a second, they confused me enough to think that that was like the enemy's pink ward, but. Uh. <laughs> oh, that was a lens from uh, from Frozen, so that makes sense. Okay. All right. Although, at the same time, I mean, you were seen by because, the pink Because, okay, he did it before he saw the pink ward, okay, and the idea it, okay. was if he was lensing that brush, it would, it deny, would the deny the vision, the vision yeah. as he walked through it to make him safe. It actually was smart, but fair enough. And here's a gank down onto the bottom lane. Tucson gets all spawns to both people. There's a depth charge, but Tucson isn't the one taking the tower damage. OQ is going to get down as the Ignar pushes both of them back into the wall. Meanwhile, in mid lane, Frozen takes a huge hit. Gonna have to double blink away, but Watch is here. Oh, a nice fake back, but there's the smite already went down from Watch. So slow, helping Goon just catch up by walking forward. It was a really nice dive. Great monsoon by Ignar, too, to keep everybody healed up. Now, I don't know if IM's gonna be able to do this. <laughs> Tucson is there, but there's a lot of threat from Goong's Cassid, and even though he only just started to stack up this Rod of Ages, Goong's gonna return to the mid lane. We start actively clearing this minion wave again. No teleports are up, but they are up right now. And so I am, this time they won't go for it, but that means, I mean, Najin gets the down low on that one. They say, all right, well, they backed off. They probably went home after those kills, after we got a lot of extra gold, so we'll just go ahead and take this free dragon. That'll be the second one for Najin. Tucson running as fast as he can. It's not going to be fast enough as Watch gets the spike. That's, that's really nice, too, because they chase them off of the dragon. I am not willing to commit to that with this Cassidy roaming around the outside and threatening. And instead, they trade two for one in terms of kills, but they lose the dragon. So Najin really winning out in that trade when all is said and done. No more threat on that bottom side of the map either, so Duke's just going to be able to continue punishing Apple in the top lane, going up and increasing his CS lead slowly. They've got to do something about OQ, however. OQ, yeah. actually, honestly, OQ in the Maokai lane is probably pretty good right now because you he doesn't have any of that armor builds up yet to deal with him, and Duke can just sit under a turret and clear with Equalizer in the bottom lane if he has to. Yeah, that wouldn't be so bad, but Najin not going for that just yet. Meanwhile, Frozen trying to still equalize here in this mid lane, and he's doing okay for himself, but because of that extra kill, Goom now ahead in terms of experience and stats. Got that Nisi large rod, so yeah. the Cassidy in 2 0 and 1. I mean, he can start. It's a this great show. start for Goom, obviously. Getting those early kills on the Cassidy accelerates your power spike significantly, and got that. Earlier, early-ish Rod of Ages, only early by about a minute or so, but that minute matters quite a bit. Yeah, it matters quite a bit when he's already halfway through his stacks right now, pretty much. Yeah. Ooh, if that had hit, or it might have been caught by Watch also at that time. He did have Flash, though, so it probably would have just resulted in a Summoner spell blown. Najin uh, being very patient, though, now that they have a little bit of an advantage, Watch a little bit more leisurely about how committed he is to ganks, and he's gonna see Tucson there also, so they're just gonna back off as Watch was split off from Pure and OQ. Yeah, Watch knew that Tucson was there, though, I think with the Tremor sense, yes. and then he's trying to wait for a counter gank, not going to get an opportunity because the ward right in the river brush takes out another one with a pink that they have sitting in try, and just discouraging any further aggression, considering that Roar has picked up some kills already. And Tucson just gonna back off, watch, making sure to just get one last glimpse of where Tucson is headed, and then safely goes back to his own jungle, who's still constantly setting up his tunnels to run off to if he needs to join the team fights in the lanes. And Duke 
starting to really just punish Apple for this Maokai. Yeah, zoning him out constantly, making him very scared to go ahead and get CS, even when he knows exactly where Rek'Sai is on the map. Yeah, I mean, Duke alone can do a lot of damage to Apple at this moment. Putting down some wards here and there. Make sure to keep eyes on where Frozen is headed off to, because even if he can deal with LeBlanc, well, LeBlanc can still go off and get kills elsewhere and ramp up just as well. Yeah, I love the Abyssal Scepter that Duke's getting too. Not only great for lane, but helping out Duke's damage also. Yeah, and Goom just gonna... really making him Goom even more of a threat that he already is this early in the game. Watch also getting a very fast ages with his 100% kill contribution so far. <laughs> and that's going to be very useful against this LeBlanc. And, I mean, the Evelyn as well to a certain degree. So they're yeah. setting up nicely. I like the itemization that we see from Najin. EM fire so far. I'm curious what that needlessly large rod is going to be turned into. If he wants to take the, the safer route, well, he'll have that zone his hourglass to dodge a LeBlanc combo. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that will pay off a lot, especially if LeBlanc uses those spells on Cassidy. That means OQ is also just safe. So Duke Watch finds Tucson, and he has quite a bit of an advantage. Goon showing up, too. Uh, but Tucson just going to run off after getting rid of that slow. Now, the gold advantage, not that big. It's about 500 gold, but that means a lot for a team that's going to scale really well into the late game with this Cassidy. Yeah, I mean, I am obviously can scale pretty well too. They have Lucian and Maokai. But it's it's mostly about the dragon control. Yeah. More dragons keep going over to Najin. And with another one coming up in a minute and a half, if they secure this one, we're looking at around 35 minutes clearing into five stacks of dragon for Najin, assuming they get the rest of them as well, which is pretty early. So IM has to start thinking about the problem that they have in terms of the dragons, but with the big item power spikes like Watch has with the Aegis, it's very hard. Meanwhile, Tucson shows up in bottom for a little bit of damage. Frozen trying to trade with Goom, but he's both low in health and mana, so you need to watch out. Goom, meanwhile, feeling a lot more comfortable in the same right now. Still shoving that up, and we do have Watch waiting in the Raptors right across, and he's just gonna burrow in. Flashes, gets the knock up onto Frozen. There's the damage coming in from Goon. Goon's still trying to chase after us. Watch has to get out from the tower range. Frozen blinks out again. Cassidy not gonna get the slow this time. And oh, nice fake from Frozen. Dodges that scary dive. But they got the t t teleport right now, which means that Duke's going to be able to kill the top lane tower, or at least continue to drive minion waves to it. Maokai goes up there, they may have to give up this dragon, and they nearly got the turret in mid as well. So that ended up, in spite of no kill occurring, heavily in favor of Najin. They didn't take damage. Now we have to see Roar in the mid lane, just to clear it to make sure the turret doesn't die. And Apple here with 10 seconds left to drag. And not a whole lot to work with in terms of his map presence. Yeah, I mean, he... Just put down some desperate damage onto Duke, but Duke can just go home and teleport, and at that point, Apple can't even stop him. And of course, after that dragon, that tower is just a tickle away from being taken down. So Najin should be able to transition right into that. Najin set up really well to head into the mid game here in 23 minutes. Yeah, a little late. They may have overcommitted to that uh, tower in mid before they went back. We do see the. Hourglass now completed for Goong, so huge item spikes. Abyssal Scepter, just finished. Locket, finished. Zonia's finished. Wow. Meanwhile, no tier two item yet on to Frozen, so Najin can absolutely own this next dragon. Yeah, Apple also had to run forward with those home guards just to make sure that he caught up to the dragon in time if Najin went ahead with the teleport from Duke. But now, I mean, he's kind of stuck in a place where he has to commit to this dragon with his teammates as Goong goes on to Roar. Roar is now down to about a third health. Goong has been exhausted. A lot of damage coming in from the calling. Oki blocks a little bit for him, and that's enough for Najin to say, all right, well, we still have the advantage because look at Duke. Duke is in the top lane, gets the tower. He's still farming away, still has that teleport. Apple now has to go home, and another potential dragon opening 
for Notch and EFI. And, and they got two towers in that as well. Goop got Ooh. caught out a little bit, so I am just going to commit to this. Goop not there. Are they going to TP? TP's yeah, coming in. TP comes in. in. He's going to go for the equalizer right away, but he's a step too late to block the dragon. Can they get some kills here, though? There's a depth charge. It's going to go over the wall. And a nice equalizer. IMS walk where They have to dodge a little bit. The monsoon putting out a lot of heals. Pure not going to get the hook. And Watch takes a ton of damage. Gets knocked up by the Howling Gale. There's a shield coming in for the Aegis of Legion. And Duke's just trying to put out some damage with the harpoons over the wall as Goon shows up. Everyone is so low, but he's a step too late to pick up a pentakill. Uh, except for, okay, Frozen will be able to blink out in time. Wasn't sure it was cooldowns there. Wow, so Najin gets the two turrets, but thanks to Goon getting pushed out, they give up a dragon. And no one actually dies in that skirmish because wow. Goon takes so long to get back out of base and into the pit. So Naja decides to engage this 4v5. Now, they want to keep them bottled up, and I think the mistake right here is Duke puts the yeah. equalizer straight back when he should have put it at an angle uh, perpendicular to the mouth of the pit, just because they need to wait for Goog to get there. So holding it for a little bit longer, uh, just trying to keep poking while they waited for Goog. That patience probably would have paid off for three or four kills for Najin in the end. I do agree. I was a little surprised to see that go down. I mean, sure, you got the direct hit damage onto three people, but they just walked out of it. Uh, with Janna there, the move speed going to help them do that, and then the heal from the Monsoon completely negated that equalizer. So, uh, Najin not getting uh, you know much advantage other than the earlier towers they got from that, but because of the towers, they're still ahead in gold by uh, a somewhat noticeable amount. And you know, at least Goong hasn't died yet. His items are still going just fine. So I don't think neither team is too concerned. Uh, I am does have to watch a little bit how they start to manage the lanes though, because Apple can't really deal with Duke as well anymore. Yeah, this is just a slow march forward for Najin, however, as we take a look at them on the bottom side of the river right now. Not really an objective down there, but still four of them milling around in that part of the map. They're trying to catch out an overextension by Roar, who's a very juicy target for them, considering he's doing pretty well right now in that bottom lane, winning it so far. Got that yo moves on top of the Infinity's Edge. Stack shift on the side for both of you to be able to clear when he needs to, on top of the natural clear that Sivir has. So I am just all going to back up together. They do see Watch. And Chusen gets spotted a little bit at the end by Tremor Sense. Quite a bit of range on that one. And we're just going to wait until, you know, either Chusen finds an opening to pressure a fight that they can take on an objective and then transition into a bit of a lead there or a little bit of catch up on the side of Wong Zhu. Yep. So we'll back off for now. This is uh, really not too exciting for the next <laughs> couple of minutes. Duke doesn't seem to want to push up very hard to take the fight to Apple in a split push situation. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need to. Uh, he just has to wait until his teleport is also back up, and then I mean, he still has his power. He should have his Zonias by then, and he farms as quietly and comfortably as he has been for the past minute or so. So Maokai finally finishing that Righteous Glory. Uh, Apple picking that one up. But still not too many other stats. So he's not the tankiest of guys. And uh, will help quite a bit more in team fights because of the utility from that item. And just Vision Wars going back and forth. And that's how it's going to be for another two minutes or so. Yeah, Duke needs some more wards in the top side, though. You can't really go past the point that he's at now with just a reward and a tri brush ward. So I think Najin could be making more of an effort to get deep wards in. OQ should have the wave clear to deal with himself down at this bottom lane tier one turret, especially with the yes. vision they already have coming in. So more useful, I think, to start trying to control the top side of the map where Najin's actually winning right now. Duke coming down into bottom, huh. though. It's like All right. well, some shenanigans are afoot. Yeah, I mean, I guess they feel that, well, maybe IM is going to start to prioritize this bottom tower. So let's just go ahead and try to counter push this with the rumble coming in. And then we can transition into the dragon at 130. Now, Maokai has teleport, and he'll be able to maybe equal out the tier one in top. I am just going to give up the tier one in bottom, though. So they'll just trade one for one, which means Najin continues to have that tower advantage by one. But having the turret advantage in bottom right now is much more meaningful because of the dragon timer. 
and where that Absolutely. minion wave can be pushed forward to. So Apple will trade, but it's not an even trade. Well, it will be if they just push this right back out and Oku doesn't stay to defend. Uh -oh. Oku's gonna get slowed. There's the calling. He has to use the heal and his ultimate to get on. Trying to put damage onto Tucson as the tower is still alive. And we're just gonna see Roar go forward with the shield from Janna. Takes that down. And so now I am catching up a little bit. Meanwhile, Duke, though, nice timing. His teleport is now back up, so he goes forward to the top lane to shove it back out before a dragon fight happens. So they do get two for one there. Now, the bottom tower was obviously very low, but great play from IM to abuse the recalls from yeah. Najin and start to even up this game. They are within 2K at the moment, starting to close the gold lead as Najin looks to get the vision wards down around the back side of the pit. They could use a couple more pinks and sweeping lenses to make sure that it is a total blackout scenario. And even though they don't have the bottom lane edge anymore, they do have that mid lane pressure advantage considering their tier one mid lane is still up. Tucson, oh, nice steal from Watch. Uh, Smite is down, but it should be back up by the time they really go for the dragon. Now, on the hunt is down along with Evelyn's Agony's Brace, but the on the hunt utility for Najin is going to be missing for about 20 seconds or more. Right around now. Duke is already hiding out here. He doesn't get the hit from the Harpoon. They're not going to be able to really start a fight, but they'll shove LZIM back to maintain that vision control. Everyone here. Roar, meanwhile, takes down the tier one in mid. Long Zhu really making as much as they can out of all these situations. That's three towers in a row for Aya. Yeah, and so Najin responds by just starting the dragon. Now Frozen is across the wall, puts down some damage onto Watch. The dragon's going down pretty quickly, but there's some Righteous Floor coming in. Roar dodges the hook, and wow, they get the steal. Tucson picks it up. Pure has to be knocked out. Roar gets a big hit from the Equalizer, though, and Goon comes in to pick up that one. Tucson also has to run away. How many kills will Najin get to equalize out of this fight? Watch gets locked down by the chain, but Apple can't stick around for the damage. Goon gets a double kill. They're looking for Tucson. Oh, Tucson gets spotted by the golem and he's going to get slowed down by Goong. Eventually will go down with another rift wall hop here. Uh, well, he's going to run away but get slowed down again. A little bit of a longer chase and Frozen, the only one left alive. Four kills to two in favor of Najin after that fight. Yeah, four for one at the end because let's take a look at that one again. So they, the dragon gets taken by Tucson as Watch loses a smite battle right here by just a hair. Pure goes down immediately, but Roar has already taken so much damage. And just look at Goom over the course of this fight. He's able just to track down kills one by one, while the spell shield from OQ and Duke's body blocking does a lot of work to keep Watch alive. Now we see Apple here. Flash coming back as Frozen W's in, and there's the Zonia's Hourglass. Finishing off the kill there with an E. So favorable trade, but still the dragon evened up by IM. They keep themselves in it. Yeah, I mean they're they're keeping themselves in it, but Goong is growing so consistently, whereas Frozen hasn't been able to grow as quickly uh, compared to this cast in five zero and one and farming just fine. Well, he look has at that void staff. Yeah, now. look at the item differential already. Uh, no death cap completed yet for Frozen. Meanwhile, three core items done for Goong and another large rod. Wow. So he's having a, a huge game so far. Yeah, just foregoing those boots. Don't really need it when you can hop around every three seconds or so. And you have the Void Staff for the Magic Pen anyway at this point. Not as big of a priority. You also have On the Hunt. And Pure going to get caught by Tucson. They're going to turn right back around as Oki activates On the Hunt. Gets a lot of damage down to Tucson. Watch shows up for the kill. Oki picks up the last hit. Goom gets slowed down by Apple and Roar. But they're going to charge back forward. Roar gets slowed down. And there's an equalizer. Roar gets hit by a Ganan, but they can't get the knock of Apple gets held behind. He's just going to sacrifice himself as he goes back in to make sure that Najin doesn't charge forward. And this might be a Baron for Najin EM Fire. Yeah, OQ gets a couple of kills on the board after having been behind this entire game. Now they can turn on the Baron. Nice chase there. Not a lot of follow-up, actually, from Najin. Not a lot of hard CC, but they have so many slows yeah. with the equalizer and the force balls that they're able just to finally and methodically chase IM down the mid lane. Yeah, they poke you right here. Tucson gets caught out, continuously CC, tries to get out with his ultimate, but watches there on the other side. And here we go, on the hunt gets triggered, and 
They just can't move fast enough to deal with this, especially when the equalizer pops Apple left at the rear. And no way he's escaping that one. Really want to commend Pure for his depth charge of this game, keeping an eye on yeah, Roaring as soon as good. he comes into range. He picks that one up. Frozen gets knocked up, but Tucson showing up for some help. A lot of damage coming in from Watch, though. And we do see Duke showing up. He's going to run to Ignar first, and he's just going to start burning her down, melting her, and one last auto attack. Oh, the monsoon at the end. The exhaust at the monsoon, but there's the equalizer. Ignar just has to wait. He has to wait for his doom <laughs> as the flame spitter comes forward. And he just gets burned down. Goo and Watch showing up behind the tower. Almost gets the kill onto Frozen. No man escapes oh, Duke. Man. <laughs> I love watching Duke. I love the big... Just the, the camera shots of Duke because he's always <laughs> bouncing in his seat chewing gum no matter what happens. <laughs> Sometimes he has a coy grin if he makes a good play. Yeah. He's one of the most fun players to see on camera. Uh, well, that results in a tier two, of course, with this Baron buff. An easy task for Najini and Fire at this point. It's their game to lose now for sure as they just charge forward and that's going to get the kill onto Tucson because of the damage over time from Ignite and. Uh, Duke, one of the Andres. They're just gonna get that inhibitor in mid. Only one person down from long two, so they won't be able to go for a big shove in to finish the game, but really securing things now. 6-0-2 for Goom, 3-0-6 for Watch. Really good scores all throughout, and now they're just focusing on this bottom lane. They still have that Baron, but want to make as much out of it as they can. Just keep on pushing. They have the advantage right now. Equalizer has come full circle off cooldown, but if they're content with what they've got. All right, they decide, well, you know, some of us can buy some items. Why don't we just go back? Duke showing off his skills. And now his harpoon while charging through and wasting all of his home guard boost in base. <laughs> Running around in circles. Well, they want to set up for the dragon, I think. Uh, in advance, considering that they had used a lot of that money they had picked up. I, I think Goom, uh, I think Duke was going to go top lane and Goom called for the farm because he's probably very close to finishing his next item here. Yeah, he must be extremely close to another 120 AP item. Yeah, probably going to be a death cap, but... I would assume so, especially at this point when you have so many other AP items on top of that. Yeah, there we go. Deathcap being finished. Goom, a scary, scary monster at this point. Sure, Deathcap on the other side, but no Void Staff. And just it's three to four core items. Once again, a full core item behind for Frozen. So he's at 661 AP. Lots of help and mana thanks to the Rod of Ages. There is Pure doing his epic Knight versus Dragon. <laughs> Role playing in League of Legends. Standing there, staring down the beast. <laughs> and then a different beast comes in. Just swallows the dragon hole. Watch picking that one up. And Goong now starting to split push. Very comfortable with all the items he has. Has his flash too. Doesn't really need his ignite to kill anyone at this point. Frozen, uh, he saw Goong in the bottom side, so he's trying to see if he, if he can get the jump onto Goong. He's like, maybe I can at least get another spell out of him, but Goong gonna avoid that for now. He actually blinks forward into the red buff, and Frozen's waiting there. He sees him, Roar showing up in that bottom side of the map, and they're gonna go onto Goong. Goong's gonna get chained, and he gets chained down. There's the calling, there's the zone. Yes, Frozen escapes just in the nick of time, but Roar using that heal. Oh, the flash over the wall. Goong avoids imminent death. <laughs> Goog's been caught out a couple of times this game, being in some rather dangerous <laughs> locations, but he played around the pink ward well, flashing over the wall to a brush where he knew yeah. there was no vision to escape. And Summer to heal now down for Roar. Wasn't even used defensively, was used to try to secure a kill, and he didn't get it, so Roar really has to watch out. I mean, if he gets hit with a death charge now, he's not really going anywhere. So all of Long Zoo now top side to block that, but their Nexus Towers are getting hit, and Tucson gets caught out over the wall. Frozen gonna help him escape, but Goon's over the wall. He goes over, he dodges out the Gale, and there's the exhaust onto him. Roar gets hit with the depth charge again. He has to flash over and dash out as Pure just marches forward. They're gonna cut off some people. Roar doesn't get hit by the hook, but Goon tries to pick up that one kill. He does against Tucson as Wash gets pushed back, and Frozen has to dodge away with a double blink. Apple getting left behind once again just to save his team. 
but nothing they can do about the turret. With one minute and 40 left on Barrett, Nodrin gonna still push forward before they maybe have to go secure the Baron for a sure and clean game. Yeah, I don't think they, well, maybe they'll go for the inhibitor. Longer death timers right now as we get 40 minutes into this game. Doom just oh, going in goodness. for a QE combo. And now, inhibitor down. Plenty of time to get to that Baron if Najin decides that's what they need to do to close. Well, they will go home. I mean, you have some tunnels here on this side of the map for Watch to ult down into if he needs to, so he's gonna go ahead and clear that wolf first. With some things coming in as long as he did have a ward there, so watch. Uh, sensing, you know, seeing uh, Frozen march through the base, didn't want to risk that, he was pretty low in health. He'll just go ahead and go back home too. Eight, zero, and two now. Just keeps on climbing. Duke now looking forward to his Rabidon's death cap. Oh boy. Yeah, he's, I mean, he hurts a lot already, but <laughs> everyone's so scared to walk in to this jungle. Would you walk into the good bun fresh? <laughs> Whoa, there's the big Nautilus too. I'd almost rather walk into Goon than Duke though. At least Goon's kills are quick. <laughs> Duke's are just like, I'm melting you. You can't do anything about it. You're just like, no. You don't like Duke's rotisserie? <laughs> Uh, Baron up in 10 seconds. We're gonna we're gonna change the Kentucky Fried Chicken here to Korea Fried Chicken, and we'll just have we don't have the Colonel, we have the Duke, and he's gonna be the one cooking the cooking the chicken. That'd be pretty awesome as Apple gets caught once again, left behind. Teammates can't help you when you're getting burned down by a scary Yordle in a machine, and a lot of other scary things, like a void person. What exactly do you call Cassidy? I don't know. <laughs> Terribly designed? <laughs> <laughs> well, watch secures that Baron for Najin. It should be the final push for Najin EFIR as they come forward. What What is the void anyway? I mean, we know, we know <laughs> League of Legends is just a mess of fantasy drones. Uh, Tucson. Tucson gets caught, gets hooked backwards, and there's the calling. Not really doing much, and Roar just has to keep his distance even while he's doing the calling, because Goon could jump onto him anytime and bring him down to below half health with one go. Goon even has that elixir. He could maybe even 100 to 0 him after like one and a half cycles of his skills. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty bad cast. Yeah, 778 with that Baron buff. And this is one of those games where Goong looks amazing. Uh, when Goong <laughs> is good, Goong is really good, and he yep. takes over the game by himself, and he's capable of having these massive carry performances. He just, he can't do it with any level of consistency. And it's one of the, the shames about, about Goong as a player. And there's the teleport on the minion being targeted, and home guard from two uh, as he gets slowed down. But he doesn't care, he'll just go ahead and take the inhibitor. Three inhibitors down against Longzhu IM. They're gonna have to put up a final fight, but it's not gonna be a pretty one. Notch and EM Fire having all the tools they need, just waiting for all the super minions to come in too. They don't want to take any risks. Just want to dominate in game two to secure a clean 2-0 win in today's matchup. Longzhu IM trying to fight off the end of the game. A nice equalizer across the Nexus turret. Scoot getting exhausted again, but lots of damage onto Ignar. And Frozen just doing what he can from the side. Watch actually gets targeted by one of the towers for quite a bit of time, so he has to back out. Two Sid having some burn damage on him, but he'll be able to escape back into Fountain and as the minions swarm around the Nexus. Najin EM Fire will finish game number two and get the 2-0 victory against Longzhu IM. Yeah, pretty convincing match tonight. Najin pulling it together, uh, had some had some worrisome moments in game one, but they managed to take away that risky Baron. And then game two was just Najin pretty much from start to finish, getting a very quiet laning phase to get Goog rolling. And Goog ending the game with 9-0 and 3 on his Cassidy, one of his trademark champions. Yeah, very well played. Uh, just playing patiently in the lane phase, just going for the trades that he can get uh, advantages in.